Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Isn't it wonderful? A controversial song. Mm -hmm. Someone in Houston. Someone in Houston. <laughs> yes. Uh, that song is played here in the Permian Basin. I know for sure every Sunday at least four times on a, on a certain station. Wow. And, uh, and uh, people call in. It's a, it's a secular station, but they donate six hours on Sunday morning mm -hmm. for the gospel. Mm -hmm. And every Sunday, someone calls in and says, play someone in Houston. Mm -hmm. You know, half of the, the people that I meet right. uh, have been thoroughly blessed with the song. Mm -hmm. The other half, they're against it. They, they don't like right. it. They hate it, you know. Right. And uh, they think they have the reasons. But I know that tonight mm -hmm. we're going to... We're going to open up a lot of minds, and we're going to put something in there yes. that needs to be in there so that they'll understand what you're trying to do. I want you to know that tonight I understand what you're trying to do, and I appreciate Amen. you. To tell, to tell you, please don't be afraid. What, Daddy? You see me, huh? Your mother and I. We're going to have to separate. Separate? But, Daddy, why? You wouldn't understand me, huh? But that's just the way it's going to have to be. But, Daddy, why? Listen, don't ask any questions. I want you to go lock yourself up in your room. Because I don't want you to see me leave. Daddy, don't be leaving, Dad. We're on our way just to, uh, to uh, Puerto Rico. And uh, we flew from Miami. And... Uh, in, in the airplane, they have these um, earphones, that, that different channels, and we're all flipping through the channels. We've got our earphones on. And one of the channels was James Dobson. Mm -hmm. And he was telling a story that I immediately turned over to her and I said, you've got to put it on Channel 7. And we all put it on Channel 7, and, and he was telling the story. No drama, no music, just the way it happened. And uh, when he finished telling that story, I turned over because we're all sitting in the same room. And all of us were just, I mean, just crying, sobbing like babe. Yes, me, ha, but it's just a, yes, me, ha, but it's just that you don't understand. Daddy, I need you. And mom needs you, Dad. Yes, me, ha. But you see, someone in Houston. In Houston. Is waiting for me. But Daddy, me and Mom are here and we love you, Dad. For Sorry. me. And, and right there in the seat, I just, I, I, just, I just went like this and I said, God, you've got to give me the music. I'm going to put it on a... Um, I could already... I could already... I knew that God was going to do it and I just asked him. I said, give me the music. We're going to dramatize this with music. I could just hear it in my mind. I knew that God was going to do it. <clears throat> Immediately, I took out my pen and I started writing. <clears throat> that song, the Lord prophesied that that song was going to do tremendous things. And, of course, you know, you hear prophecies and you kind of have to... You, you, a lot of times you just, okay, well, wow, that's great. And you, you really don't have the, the, the sight, you know, right. the, the futuristic sight. And uh, at that time, I said, well, praise the Lord. I just know this song is going to do a lot. Forgive me, Daddy. I need you. Please don't do this to me. Oh, can't you see? I don't understand, Daddy. Why do you have to do this to me? Go to your room now. Oh, and don't worry about me. I do. I love you. Don't you understand me? We recorded it. And the moment that we went to the recording studio, we had nothing but spiritual warfare. It just, they, it just wouldn't come out. It was a simple song, but it wouldn't come out. We re-recorded, re-recorded, re-recorded. We remixed, we remixed, we remixed. The gentleman from the, from the recording studio kept saying, I don't, know, I don't understand why we can't get this thing right. Mm. He said, uh, it's a simple song. It had like three or four instruments. Just simple background voices, not, nothing complicated. But there's something about this song, something that, that someone's, and he, you know, non Christian, right? He's saying someone's trying to keep this from coming out, from it being uh, recorded. Well, I knew what was, you know, I know about spiritual warfare, I know what was going on. Finally, we, we got it out, we sent it to the, to the manufacturer. They came out with our name misspelled. 
How do you figure that? Mm. <laughs> and all of a sudden, like, okay, we gotta wait another six weeks before we change everything. I'm like, wow, I'm realizing this thing is gonna be really big. We put it out, we send it to the radio stations, and, and we're like, okay, we're ready, ready for this thing to happen. Mm. They start coming back. All the Christian radio stations start sending them back. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, we can't play that. I'm sorry, this is not up to par. I'm sorry, this is not what we want to project our image and all kinds of like, uh, I can't believe this. I went to my bedroom sobbing. I had 2,000 copies that nobody wanted. And I said, Lord, what am I gonna do? You prophesied, you told me what you were gonna do with the song. What do I do now? And the Lord said, give it away. Give it away, don't sell it, give it away. And I'm like, okay, all right, I'm gonna give it away. She's waiting for me. Please, Daddy. Please don't do this to me. I love you, Daddy. Mommy loves you. Don't go. At services, uh, anybody want a copy? <clears throat> this is what happened. The Lord said he was going to do great things. I don't understand. I don't know what God is doing. If you want a copy, just come on up. People just line up. Come on. And if you know anybody in the radio, anybody that, that can do something with this, do it. Well, I was just, I was just hurt. I was just totally hurt because I knew what the song could do. Well, a lady in, in Laredo, Texas took a copy, had an uncle at a non-Christian radio station, <clears throat> took the copy, he heard it, played it on secular radio, and his phones lit up, people crying, needing ministry, and he don't know what to do with them. Because hmm. he's not a, uh, saved. Right. He's not a Christian. <laughs> and, and he's like, like, boy, I mean, he's just a panicked. And, and, uh, but he realized it was a hit because people were calling in. So he went from San Antonio, made a copy of it. Now, in radio, you don't do this. You don't make a second generation, what they call them. But he made a copy, took it to a friend in San Antonio, has one of the biggest stations in San Antonio. And he dared him. He said, I dare you to play this oh, man. without listening to it. I dare you. I dare you. And uh, he said, why? He said, just go ahead. I dare you. I dare you to play it because he knew what was going to happen. He put it on and the phones lit up and this guy, the same thing happened to him. He's on the phone like, what do I do, man? This people on the phone is crying. Who's this man, Joel Perales? We got to get a hold of him and let him take care of these people. What are we going to do? <laughs> well, they called me. By the time they got a hold of me, my son was number one in the secular. And all the other stations were playing it, and all the other stations number one. They called me. They invited me to come. They welcomed me to get the phone and to, to what they said, take care of these people. They didn't know what it meant, ministry, you know. Uh -huh. And I'm there at the non-Christian radio station ministering to people left and right, and I'm just as fast as I could pick up the phone ministry. It's been six long years now. Since my dad left. And you know, he told me that I would see him every other weekend. But I haven't even seen him once. Somewhere out there is a man I love with all my heart. My daddy. And now I understand what he was trying to say that day he left. You know, I can still hear him. I can still hear every word he said. Someone in a huge time is waiting for me. Waiting for me. waiting for you.
this one song, Brother Munoz, without a doubt in, in my mind, has literally given Satan a black eye because we have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of letters from people that marriages have been healed. Mm -hmm. Testimonies night after night, every church that we go to. Phone calls, testimonies, letters, uh, you name it. Hello? Hello, mija. Daddy? I have something to tell you. Dad? I hope you'll be glad. What is it, Daddy? You see, mija, your mother and I, we've been talking and and we've decided to put our marriage back together again. You have, Daddy? Yes, Miha. Really? Yes, Miha, but I want you to forgive me for walking out on you the way I did. Oh, Daddy, that's okay. No, Miha, I did wrong. And I want you to know that I, I, I want to spend the rest of my life making up for my mistake. But, Daddy, what caused you to change, Dad? Oh, Miha, I sure am glad you asked me that. Because, you see... Someone in heaven has opened my eyes. Daddy, that was Jesus, Dad. Me and Mom, we've been praying for you. Open my eyes. Oh, I'm so happy, Daddy. And now I can see. Thank you, Lord. I'm coming home now. You are, Daddy. Someone in heaven has caused me to see. Daddy, I've missed you so much. I love you, Mia. I love you, Daddy. Mom! Jonathan! six long years to realize what I have. They say you never know what you have until you, until you lose it. My, how that's true. Maybe there's someone out there that has been temporarily blinded by Satan's false illusions. I just hope it, it doesn't take as long as it took me to realize what I had. You see, my family waited. I hope yours does too. Family. I love you, Dad. I love you guys. I love you. I always win. 